My new workshop has lots of space, but to use it effectively, what I really need is bench space. The inspection pit down the middle means I have to plan this carefully, and my basic idea is to get a bench wide enough to straddle the pit, so it can be secure and stable without depending on the timbers covering the pit to support it. Buying a newer second-hand bench just the right size turns out to be impractical, so in this video I'll be building a sturdy workbench myself. Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. Matthew Wilson recommended I check out Simpson's Strong Ties as a quick way to build a sturdy custom bench, so I ordered their bench kit. The core of the kit is eight strong steel corner connectors used to make a rectangular timber frame. They're designed to fit standard CLS lumber, and within reason the frame can be any size you want. The standard bench design includes a flat plywood top, as well as a shelf attached to the lower struts. The kit includes all the screws required, and I completely ignored Matthew's advice to immediately replace them with higher quality screws. The most important dimension is the width, to make sure the bench legs sit comfortably either side of the pit. The pit measures out at just over a metre wide, but I need a little wider than this to make sure the bench is resting on good concrete. My other main constraint is the available size of plywood sheet to make the bench top. The standard size available in home improvement stores is 2400 by 1220 millimetres. This turns out to fit fairly nicely in the available space, and it fits snugly across the pit with a reasonable margin for strong footing. I want the height to be comfortable for operating machines while standing, and I need the top to stick out around the edge to clamp camera mounts and other tool holding arrangements. I picked a 32mm margin around the edge, which gave me a maximum frame size of 1156 by 2376mm. For the height, I chose 900mm. Putting these measurements into Simpson's online tool gives me a timber cutting list to go and buy. The result was three 3 meter lengths, four 2.4 lengths of CLS, and two full-size sheets of 19mm ply. Before I measure anything, I start by cutting one end of each piece of CLS true in the mitre saw. I have it set up really well to cut a right angle, so this is a quick, easy way of getting a good starting reference. I've already checked that I have enough allowance for this and the sizes required. I now measure up and cut four long lengths, four shorter ones for the width, and four to height for the corners. The kit instructions direct me to fit the steel corners to the vertical posts first, and give the dimension to measure from the top of the post to the top of the steel corner. For the lower steel corner, there's some leeway, so I pick a compromise between a decent gap above the floor and the maximum storage space on the lower shelf of the bench. <laughs> 
The corners are aligned with the top edge of the marked lines, and the instructions specify an order for the screws, starting with the lower pair. I'm trying to make sure the timber is firmly against the steel corner, and that the top edge stays lined up and true as I drive in the screws. Once I've fitted ties to the first pair of verticals, I line them up in position with one of the short length horizontals. The dimensions are looking good, so this end needs to be fixed up. I use a clamp to make sure the horizontal is firmly in place in the corner. The next screw to go in is the one that attaches the horizontal closest to the end in contact with the vertical. With both these in place, the end of the bench is already recognisable. The equivalent construction for the other end of the bench goes together exactly the same way. The two ends can now stand upright while I line up the longer horizontals. Already the overall shape of the bench is apparent. The final screw to tack the lower rectangle of the frame together is the single screw holding the longer horizontals to the corner. I can now fill in the rest of the screws on the outside, followed by the screws on the inside of the frame. The inner two screw holes on the inside pull the corner together as they are tightened, then the final two screws anchor everything into that position. At this point it should be very clear how important it is that the end of the timbers are square. If they weren't, then tightening the corners would make the whole bench crooked. Before I fit the top corners and struts, I need to get the lower shelf into place, as it'll be much more difficult when the frame is fully assembled. The only indoor space I have big enough to cut this to size is the top of the new bench, but getting the plywood into place on my own took a bit of careful balancing. The shelf needs to be trimmed to size, as it doesn't need to stick out the way I want the bench top to, so I mark out a 64mm strip to be removed. I fit a downward cutting jigsaw bit so the cut edge on the, of the top face of the ply takes less damage. I don't care about a little bit of splintering at the bottom as it'll be hidden against the struts. As I start cutting, the edge to be cut is between the vertical supports, so I need a way to make sure the board doesn't lose support as I progress, and eventually fall or splinter. 
Once I'm well clear of the start of the cut, I use a clamp and some scrap wood to hold the two sides of the start of the cut together and prevent the weight of the board from sagging down. I add a second clamp further along, and finally a third clamp just before the end of the cut. Between them they support the shelf ply well enough to avoid splintering as the cup completes. The shelf board width is now the same as the frame, so I can move it across to be fully supported by the frame verticals, unclamp the scrap material and remove it. Because the verticals are longer in the direction of the bench's length, it's straightforward to shift the board until 64mm that needs to be removed from the length is overhanging and can cleanly be cut off. This time I'm cutting across the grain, so I use a knife to cut a line in the top veneer to prevent it from splintering. A hand plane tidies up the cut edge, and a file helps clean up the corners. The shelves need to cut out at each corner for the verticals, so I use a bit of scrap CLS to mark out the right shape at all four corners. I then lower the board onto the horizontals of the frame, sitting it at an angle so that all four corners stick out clear of the frame, and the cutouts can be made with a jigsaw. I can now lift the board, rotate it into the right orientation, and drop it snugly into place. With the lower shelf board in place, I can fit the top set of metal corners to the lines I made earlier when I was measuring out. It made sense to hold it with a clamp while I checked whether everything lined up, before I added the screws. I'm glad I didn't screw the corners in place, as the tops of the horizontals don't quite line up. This must be due to variation in the width of the CLS that the instructions allow for. After thinking over the best way to resolve this, I decided to move the corners up until the timber edges aligned with the short horizontals. Now I've confirmed the corners are the correct height, I fit the first two corner screws using the same sequence specified in the instructions. The other two horizontals can now drop into place, and inevitably the top edges don't quite line up. 
I now wanted the timber ends held snugly against the verticals before I screwed them in place, so I ran a long ratchet strap around the whole bench at the corners and added a bit of tension. The screws went in once again in the order specified in the instructions. Outside first into the horizontals. Then into the verticals. Then the back screws that tighten the corner. And finally the last screws into the horizontals. At this point the full cuboid frame of the bench was together. Despite my best efforts there are now significant differences in the levels of the horizontal timbers, so I thought the best way to fix this was to use a plane. I spent quite a bit of time on this phase, not stopping once I got the low ends level, but kept working to get each edge as straight as possible and the overall top as flat as I could. If I wanted the bench top to be reasonably flat and level, I needed the top of the frame to be as flat as possible to start with. For the one vertical that was left protruding, I used a surform to get it flat, followed by a belt sander. Now felt like a good time to fit the feet to allow me to true up the frame. With the frame tilted onto its side, I drilled large round holes into the bottoms of the verticals. My Forstner bit set is cheap and nasty, and I had a really hard time getting these holes deep enough. They clogged really easily and were clearly losing their sharp edge. The hole accepts a threaded steel insert with spikes to hold it in place firmly into the wood. I could then thread an adjustable foot into place, allowing me to trim each corner to help level the bench. The next few steps will start to lock the bench into its final shape, so once I have it back the right way up, I shift the feet into position either side of the pit. Fixing the bottom shelf to the frame will stop the frame from flexing out a square, so before I screw the shelf into place I need to make sure the frame is as square as possible. As I don't own a 2 meter square to check it, the best way I can think of is to measure the two diagonals and adjust them until they're the same. This doesn't take too much adjustment, as the shelf has forced the frame fairly close to square already. I then set a marking gauge to half the thickness of the CLS timbers to locate the screws. For each screw I use the marking gauge to mark the spot, drill a pilot hole with a slight countersink and fit the screw. I added these all round the shelf using half the screws provided, the other half will fix the top. The top is simpler to make, but harder to fit. I've sized the whole bench so the top can be a full size sheet, so there's no need to cut to size. However, I wanted a small overhang all the way round to clamp things to, so I need to position it carefully. <laughs> 
It's heavy enough to be tricky to shift by a small amount, so I adjust its position by tapping it with a mallet. After a few rounds of measuring and tapping, it's in place. After a final check, I clamp it in place at several points. Now I need to establish the right place for the screws. I use a marking gauge set to half the timber frame width plus the overhang and mark across a line which avoids all of the corner fixing screws. Each hole is countersunk deep to make sure the screw head is well below the surface as I'm going to cover them to make a smooth worktop. This plug cutter is an exact match for my countersink drill, and I use it to cut enough plugs from a piece of scrap. With some practice, I've learned to avoid cutting the plugs too deep so they break off inside the cutter. It's much easier to snap the plugs out of the scrap with a screwdriver than it is to prise them out of the cutter. The plugs are dipped in wood glue, then I carefully align the grain with the top layer of the ply to give the best looking finish and tap them into the holes. The wood glue is wiped away with a wet cloth as soon as possible or it gets more difficult. Once the glue is completely dried, I use a freshly sharpened chisel to remove the excess plug material one thin layer at a time. Trying to remove too much can split the wood at the surface and ruin the effect. The final couple of layers are as thin as possible to get the smoothest finish. The downside of having protruding edges is that they can easily catch and splinter. To make the corners less hazardous I'm going to use a router bit to round them. The bearing on this router bit means it mostly aligns itself, so it's fairly straightforward. For the top edge, I'm using this smaller radius bit from the same set. The final step is to apply, apply a finish, and I'm using boiled linseed oil. I picked this finish because it's very easy to repair and renew, 
A workbench is inevitably going to get worn and dinged, so a finish that can be fixed up without completely stripping down and starting from scratch is essential. And that's my bench. I've made it with practicality at the forefront of my mind at every point, but I'm happy with how it looks and it certainly provides plenty of workspace and storage. Some views of this bench in use have already appeared on my main channel and it's been serving me very well. I have a few ideas for mods and improvements that will make it more useful, so stay tuned if you're interested in what I decide to do. Thanks for watching, take care, I love you all.